Another thing that we need to be able to do with our files is manipulate them. If you were on a GUI, you would be able to drag things around to move them from one folder to another. You would be able to right click and do a copy and then paste them someplace else or you'd be able to drag them to the trash. We need to learn how to do those same types of features on the command line. And there are three commands that we're going to introduce for doing this. The first one is MV, short for move. You'll note that a lot of the command line commands are named basically by taking what would have been the full English word and just taking out all the vowels. Not all of them, but that's a standard theme. So move, and when we run move, we have to give it two arguments. It's interesting to see what happens if I don't. First, it tells us that it's missing operands, and then it tells us that we can get help. And this is a nice feature of a lot of the command line commands that we have. So we can get additional information, and it says that there's move, we can give it options, a source and a destination, and it tells us about a number of the options that, that we can use with move. We're just going to focus on a source and a destination. Now, move can be used to, it's basically like the drag and drop feature on a GUI. We're going to take a file, we're going to take it from one location and put it in another. With move, we can do this with single files or we can do it with whole directory structures to move them around. So, Let's say that I wanted to change the name, and so it turns out moving can also be used for renaming. So I want little file, so one thing I could do is I could take little file and move it to dot dot. Well, if I do an ls, there's no more little file, but if I do an ls of dot dot, you'll see that now we have little file. It hadn't been there before. And, but I don't want it down there, I want it back up here. I forgot to tell it where to put it, I just said mv dot dot slash little file dot txt and it tells me I'm, I'm missing another file operand. I want to move it into the current directory. As you might recall, we refer to the current directory by the name dot and so that completes our mv command and we can see we have little file back here. What if I decide I don't like that name? Well, I can move little file to tiny file dot txt and now we have tiny file instead. So that's the MV command. Be a little bit careful with MV. If you MV something on top of another file name that already exists, it will basically delete that other file that already existed. Okay, so, so you want to make sure that whatever the destination is, there isn't something already there that, that you wanted. This can be, now that, that isn't, yeah, this can be, I guess uh, avoided somewhat if you use tab completion. Okay, now in, in our case we just gave it a dot and so that if you just end it with a directory you're moving into some directory if there happens to be something there it's going to get obliterated but if you're doing something like changing the file name I could have hit tab and before I did this move it wouldn't have tab completed tiny file because there wasn't anything there named it. And so if the tab doesn't complete for you, then you know that it's a safe name and you're not going to kill anything. What if I don't want to move something around, I actually want to make a copy of something? Well, following the let's take out all the vowels, the copy command is cp and we tell it the file that we want to copy. So for example, I want to copy sample and I'm going to make a copy of it called sample2.txt. Here again, if we put it on top of something that was already there, it will erase what was already there. We could demonstrate that by first let's cat sample2 so that we can see it is a copy of the original sample file. Okay, so we have both of those there. And then if I copy the not txt file, I made a text file, but I called it something else, because it turns out I did this to, ex to illustrate the fact that those extensions really aren't that important to the computer, they're important to the human. They're what help you to know what a file is supposed to be. But if I cp that now to sample2, and we cat sample2, you'll note that my earlier sample2 is gone. Okay, I have now put on top of it the 
contents of, of this file. So once again, take care that you don't copy over the top of files that you actually wanted to keep around. And if you have files that you don't want to keep around, how do you get rid of them? Well, that's where the rm command comes in. So I decide I don't like this sample2 file at all. I can rm sample2.txt, and now it's gone. A word of caution with, R, with rm. If you're used to dragging things to the trash, you are used to also being able to go, oops, I didn't want to do that. Let me take that out of the trash. That's not how rm works. When you rm a file, it's gone. Uh, there are various reasons for that. Uh, it's even remarkably hard to recover it off of the disk because in the case of Linux, there are multiple things going on. There could be other users that are, that are using the disk at the same time. When you rm a file, it's dead. Um, now, in the case of rm and cp, uh, there are some additional commands or arguments that we can specify here. We have a help that will give us some of the information for that. Uh, when we talk about directories in the next video, we'll come back and see how we can do the rm and cp of directories because by default that doesn't work. rm and cp only work with regular files unless you give them some additional commands, some arguments that we will talk about in the next video.